Greetings internet, welcome to Aaron Plays. And in this video I just wanted to do my gaming update. I did one at the 1st of October, this is now the 1st of November though this might not drop on the 1st of November because it's getting quite late in the evening. I'm getting... Sorry, sorry, <laughs> I'm not that tired yet. Um, I've actually just shot a video for Ambush that went, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And Ambush was one of the games I mentioned I would like to do this month and have done it. And I haven't finished the mission, there's still a long way to go as yet. Um, the other games I mentioned in October that I'd like to look at were Great War Commander by Hexasim. I tell you what, let me pause this and go and get the game because it's all nice to have a look at the box. the box now I got this oh, maybe two years ago um, yeah give or take try look at it it wasn't brand new so it's got 18 on it so it was probably about 2021 20, I got this and uh, I played three scenarios with my daughter who said she enjoyed it but hasn't asked to play it again not sure why, but um, you know, she actually won two of the two of the three scenarios we played. So I've also got with this. this is, <coughs> excuse me, not sure where that coffee fit came from. So this is the the core game. This has the British. No, it doesn't. This has the Germans, the French, and for some unknown reason, I know a lot of you guys are Americans who watch this. And maybe that's why, because the biggest game con gamers out there are you Americans, the Americans. But you didn't come in until 1917, so there we go. So there was an expansion box, which did bring the British into it. So far, though, I've only played the first three scenarios with my, my daughter. And I've started playing with, well, one of our... Monday night gaming crew who turns out he actually does enjoy a war game he's bought this himself and we've played hmm, the first three scenarios so I've played the first three, three scenarios twice and that's as far as I've gone at the present moment it's two to one in my favour and he's also playing it with his partner which is very nice so we're doing scenario four this weekend Probably Friday night. Yes, I class Friday night as, as the weekend. And I've, I don't know if I'm going to try and film it because it will be live. And I need to ask him how he feels about that and such forth. So I might just do like I did with the Death Valley, which was a before action report. I set it all up. I do a little video. So this is what it looks like. And then after action, this is what happened. Or if he's up for it, might do it with both of us moving our pieces and such forth. So we'll have to see on that one. So yeah, the really, I've got everything for this game. So there's this box, there was the Great Britain expansion, and then there was a action pack, which has some more scenarios, some more Brits, um, and some more other counters, uh, tanks and such forth. This follows the same system or similar system to the Combat Commander, done by DMT, but this is the First World War rather than the Second, and hence the Great War Commander. And yes, it actually has vehicles, maybe because the vehicles don't move very fast. The initial three scenarios we've done so far were in 1914. I think scenario four takes us into 1915. So it's French versus German. I therefore don't think I'll be doing this solo. This is something I'm going to be doing opposed. And if I can get Tom, that's his name, to actually play it with me on the camera, warts and all, then I'll do that. If not, if not. But I won't be doing a solo version of this. What next? Well, I do have the continuation of... War and Peace, the Russian campaign, 
I've done, and I've only dropped onto the actual channel so far, two episodes. No, I've done three episodes. Introduction, French Turn 1, Russian Turn 1. So I actually have done French Turn 2 and Russian Turn 2. And I did a little short showing how my storage system, because at the present moment my table's got a um, ambush on it. But once I've dropped those extra two videos, I will then bring that back and shoot probably another four episodes releasing one but i don't want to release too many videos one per day sorry two per day is my maximum in my mind because obviously it's, it all takes time and I, I shoot most of these in in the evening um when i finish work so it all takes time but that's the russian campaign for war and peace and the, it's the avalon hill 1980 version not the latest new new one and if you've been following my channel you've been following it anyway what do i want to do after i finish this ambush and the war and peace because i think to keep in two games on the go i've also had my continuation of plan centaur from fallen eagles which is an opposed game with mark on vassal so here's the actual game and we're playing through it on Vassal, we're doing, which is scenario three. It's the Prussian attack into the flank of the um, Army du Nord. The French using their sixth corps to defend and some units of the Imperial Guard. And we continue, we're doing that by log files. He does a log. I upload it, do my log and upload it. And eventually, once I've done probably about 10 logs, I then record it out onto the channel. Uh, onto the um, computer using zoom and then releasing that as a video and it works it's a good, good little system me and mark have been discussing with another guy called, who's also called mark who also has some um, content we're discussing actually doing june 16th ligny and quattro bra combined when will that occur not sure as yet, but probably after Plan Saint. Well, it will definitely be after Plan Saint Wales finished. Uh, we've been using that as a, a refamiliarisation with the rules, seeing how it goes. Um, Mark and Mark are actually playing a game of Rising Eagles Austerlitz together, and that was all caused by not my Mark, other Mark it is M A R C. Um, I believe he's American, but he's living in Britain. He's got his own, I say, his own channel. He's been playing Fallen Eagles by himself, solo, on the map boards. And we were discussing with him via comments. My mark, M-A-R-K. Why do they have to both have the same name? So let's call him Mark 1, Mark 2. My guy is Mark 1. And the new dude, Mark 2. There we go. So, Mark 1, via the comments section through my channel and also through Mark 2's channel, agreed to play a game. Mark 2 and myself have had various discussions on the rules of Fallen Eagles. And I made the offer, well, we're all talking. Why not do June 16th? Ligny and Quattro Bra. I have played Ligny and Quattro Bra combined against another guy called Gerard, and that was face to face. This will be with the Mark One and Mark Two, <laughs> will be a vessel orientated game, probably with logs and such. Forth. Though we might try a live session or two, maybe an introductory live session to discuss what we want to do. They want me to play the French. Maybe because I'm the more experienced out of the two. Um, Mark II, um, well, you say you would rather not play the French. Um, he hasn't decided which of the two allies that he would like to play. And Mark I at that point said, yeah, probably you have been the more experienced. We'll play the French. That means I'll be playing both of them effectively. And we're going to use the random cards. There's cards in, in each box which changes some of the parameters 
can't remember exactly what the parameter changes will be, but once we get to set it up and have discussions, we will draw cards and take it take it from there. So that might happen this month. It might not. Depends on how much of the Fallen Eagles that me and Mark 1 get through, and also how far Mark 1 and Mark 2 get on in their house list game. But that's on the horizon. That, therefore, is the, the three games I currently have ongoing. Ambush, Russian Campaign, War and Peace, and <sighs> Fallen Eagles. Yeah, I've got nothing else. I've got Great War Commander that I'm playing face-to-face. -face. So, yeah, that's all that I have ongoing. Yeah, I've got Completed Ambush. Completed Ambush. Completed Anzio. So, what will I do? This Ambush will probably... I have no idea. It'll probably take me halfway through the month. And the Russian campaign, right, I've done two turns. There are a total of eight. So I imagine that'll take me a couple of more weeks. So what to do after that? Well, I mentioned in October that I want to bring... Make sure I've got the right one. D-Day at Tarawa into the picture. So I'm going to... I did this... I can't remember, I, I think it might have said in October that it was about six months ago, eight months ago. It was it was, it was some point this year, um, and it was in the actual YouTube hiatus that I set this up. Um, played, played it, well, I played it a couple of times. The first two times were, <laughs> didn't work at all. Uh, or I could say that, I was rubbish at it. I then reread the rules and reread the rules and then tackled it again and tackled the full campaign and still lost, but it was by one or two victory points. I can't remember the exact amount. Maybe I should have made a record, but it wasn't by much. So D Day at Tarawa, absolutely glorious. I can't, I can't praise it enough. It had me riveted all the way through. D Day at Omaha which was the pre predecessor to this one, I enjoyed, but nowhere near as much as this one. Now, I know there's quite a lot of debate which is the better of the two. Maybe it's because I've got a Pacific leaning. I don't have many games on the Pacific, but when I do play them, I thoroughly enjoy them. And, yeah. I've also still got D-Day at Peleliu, D-Day at Iwo Jima, and D-Day at Saipan, which I'll all want to play at some point but this is the next one um i might do d-day back at d-day omaha I might do a backtrack or such forth but the way i'm looking and thinking of doing them is in historical order this is the first one in, in you know, it's the second game that was released but it was the first one date wise so i might do them in chronological order so that will be this one would then would it be first period was september Side powers in yeah, so it looks like it would be D Day at Omaha. So, yeah, nice production. I'll probably do a unboxing. I know other players have done unboxing, um, and it's been out for quite a while. But my unboxing, the way I look at it, is is more of a my thought process on what it looks like and how it feels. And I don't know if you guys are interested, then obviously you won't watch it. But if you are, well, then you will. And if someone hasn't seen this and hasn't seen an unboxing, well, there you go. So that will probably be, well, I say probably be, it will be after Ambush as my modern game. I know it came out, oh, what, 2018? 2017. So modern-ish game that I'm going to go through. And it's obviously completely solo friendly, same as Ambush. Starting to see a theme here. Yeah, I mean, there might be a little jump there because I took the box down and brought a new box in. So, yeah, Ambush, D Day at Tarawa, both completely solo games um, designed for solo play. War and Peace isn't. It's a two player game that I'm playing solo, and I'd like to carry that on as well in the sense of a that kind of idea. And it's also an old one, the classic. So, I did Anzio moved over to War and Peace. What's going to be the next one? Well, that's a good question because I've got a little 
Hmm, decision to make. What next? The options I have is do another war and peace scenario. I mean, the Russian campaign, I could do the peninsula, or I could do 1809, the Valgrom campaign, or I could move on to the liberation, 1813, or even do a small one, the 1814 campaign. Those are all, all options, and I'm, I'm still working out which one to do. If I do war and peace, I might get to the end of the eight turns um, Russian campaign and go, let's do something different. Or I might go, wow, that was a blast. Let's do that again. Option two. One of the comments, and I say oh, this is one of the reasons I like the comments because it's I'm interacting with yourselves, is that in one of the comments I received was someone mentioned a game that I I had heard of but was completely and utterly off my radar. And that was this one here, Caesar's Legions. Didn't know much about it at all. I'd seen the, the box around in various game stores way back when. And maybe because of the cover art, and I have done a unboxing, I, the cover art app does nothing for me whatsoever. I think it's one of the most worst cover arts I've ever seen on a game. And maybe when back in the mid, mid to late 80s, and I was looking at these sort of games, I mean, what it was this? It was, it was 75. So I, if this was on a shelf and I looked at that cover, <clears throat> no. I know we shouldn't judge games by the cover, just like we shouldn't judge books by the cover, but we are human and we do. So that cover art did nothing for me. But the guy's comments about it, he said, he said, would you do a video playthrough of Caesar's Legions? Well, I can't do a video playthrough of a game I haven't got. Yes, I know there might be a Vassal module, but I don't like using Vassal if I don't own the game. That just seems to be wrong to me. So I had a look. I went on eBay. There was a gentleman selling a copy there at a reasonable price. I knocked him down a little bit. Is that naughty? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm not rich. He sold it to me. It arrived three or four days later. I saw the box art and went, yeah. Uh. I then did an unboxing. Think again with my thoughts and what I thought of it. Put it up for you guys. And it's got more views in fact it's got the most views i've had this month so that's made me think hmm, there is interest good the rule book is not that daunting second good and i've got an interest in roman history third good but war and peace caesar's legions oh <gasps> there's something else in the mix as well what's that you say well let me go and get it okay the Moscow campaign. Now, is that backwards for you guys? Strike and Counter-Strike. Russia, 1941. Another eBay purchase because I wanted to have the first war game I ever played in my collection. So, yes, at the tender age of probably 14, 13. Can't exactly remember. It was between 77 and 80. It was probably about 79 then. Um... And I just mentioned that in my unboxing and uh, dates and, and such well, back then. But it was the very first. Before that, I was playing with Airfix soldiers. I um, wasn't playing with marbles. I actually had a little war game book. I was playing with um, painted the troops. Red for British. Blue for French. White for Austrians. Because back then, there were no individual plastic Austrian figures. There were metal ones. But, pff, you know, I was at school. Look at the four figures. I was playing Napoleonic figures and I had the book. I was reading Airfix, or, you know, Napoleonic rules in the library. And a guy approached me in the library, um, same year group. And he said, okay, so you're reading some war game rules. Have you heard of board war games? And I went, no. And he told me about this. He invited me over. He, we played the game. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. I asked if I could borrow it. He let me borrow it. I took it home. I played it twice solo, um, doing the best I could in my, like I used to do with me, me, me toy soldiers, which I did have a, a neighbour played the toy soldiers, but um, I still played on my own sometimes and with my younger brother. 
I loved it. Went back the next week and we played. I wouldn't say, I mean, I might have said, um, I didn't trounce, I won. Um, can I remember which side I played? No, it was years ago. I, I think remember playing the first time. I think I was playing the Russians. So this was the first game I ever played. And I don't remember actually playing it ever again since. But when I saw it on eBay, I thought, yes, got to have it. So I've done an unboxing of this with my thoughts and I'm tempted to do it. The downside of this one is it's a full size paper map. There's only one mapper, so it's a full size paper map. So storing it might be a bit of a problem, whereas Caesar's Legions has two two boards similar to the um, War and Peace, which I can store quite well. So that might be the one downside for this. But I'm going to let, let you guys choose. If you've got this far in the video, great. Let me know which you prefer. Caesar's Legions or Moscow Campaign. And that's it really I, I i mentioned last in, in october into the woods and i shot a few episodes or videos of death valley um which i was playing against another guy a guy called john and i then shot for three episodes going through the rules of that and that was warmly received and I'm, I am enjoying the, the Great Battles of the American Civil War. The rules, though, they are hard. Probably the hardest set of rules I'm working through at the present moment. Um, yeah, they are, they are hard. I mean, I'm not playing ASL anymore, so. Uh, and I, I would put that second to probably ASL. Oh, no, and then third. Let's do Starfleet Battles. I haven't played Starfleet Battles since for, for Donkeys. So yeah, ASL, <laughs> great battles during Civil War. Um, so Into the Woods, I can't see that happening in November. Maybe December, depending on how the other games go. I also picked up the new game for, um, well, for me, a new game for the Next War series, which was Next War Vietnam. Again, I looked at the rules. Would love to do it. We'll get it to the table at some point. Probably not in November. Anything else? Anzio. Anzio. I was talking about the advanced game of Anzio, wasn't I? Yeah, there's someone else going to be doing that. And I really want to watch his videos and see how he gets on. Now, this is Mark Gruger. I'm not sure how he says his surname. Um, which is Clark Commando and then some numbers on on YouTube. Um, if you actually go to um, any of my comments, you'll see he actually made a lot of comments of what I was actually playing Anzio and also about some of the other games I've got. And I've been watching his videos and I find them thoroughly enjoyable. He's going to be doing an advanced game of Anzio starting from right at the beginning. So I'm going to follow his videos and hopefully... You guys will follow his videos and then after he's done that i don't know how long it's going to take him until he gets either bored of it or is, feels he's done enough at some point i will get anzio the advanced game to the table i've learnt a lot doing the basic game it's not an easy game the rules aren't too bad but they're a bit all over the place and there are some different concepts there that I'm not quite used to. So I made a few mistakes. I also loaded the videos up for Anzio onto Board Game Geek. And some people were watching it via Board Game Geek, didn't go through to the YouTube part. And I made comments there, which in general have been very, very informative and fully appreciated because they do point out some things that tactically and how to play the game that I missed, that I didn't bring in in the game that could have cost either side a 
massive smack in the arse. Which, when I do come to the Event Advance game, I will read all those comments again and absorb it. And then, obviously, there's the rules for the Advance game. And I will take those on, on board. So, we're done. If you're still here and not falling asleep, thank you very much. Uh, November, 30 days November. So we're on November 1st as I'm recording this. So 30 days gaming. I don't game every day. Um, I've got work, family and so on. But I do game as much as possible. I'm finding I'm watching less and less television. I'm reading less and less books and more and more rules. And watching a lot of YouTube, watching other guys, what they do on YouTube and their games and such forth. I watch a lot of, um, yeah, I know, I mentioned this in one of my shorts, the United content. I watch a lot of music videos because my music's also very important to me. But so I find less TV or standard TV, whatever you want to call it, you know, watching films and um, TV shows and watching more YouTube historical game wise and uh, my reading has changed from a lot of fiction I, I still enjoy science fiction and fantasy but I'm now reading a lot more rules keeping myself up to date with this and you know, the other games I play and also books on history I picked up again a, a book that will help me through the Italian campaign that I actually did in my video and yeah, it's called the Savage Storm by James Holland. I haven't started, it only arrived today. So I'm looking forward, let me, let me pick it up. Ugh. So this is, covers exactly what I did in my basic game playthrough of Anzio. This covers the Battle for Italy in 1943. So from Salerno, I don't know if it does Sicily, or it just do, but uh, yeah. And this is a relatively new book out, apparently. Um, what are we looking at? 2023. So it's brand new. Thank you, Amazon. I ordered that yesterday. That arrived today. You can't fault that. I'm, I know Amazon has, has got a lot of detractors, but when you want something, it comes the next day. You, as I say, you can't fault that. I would like to end at this point. Thank you for watching. If you could do the YouTube... I'll probably try not to swear. The YouTube stuff. Okay. Um, it does me, does me a solid. And the most important, have fun. Play games. Enjoy yourself. And until next time... I'm about to lean across to do that because my bloody thing's not working again. Bye, Internet.